Targage du Mavekm, allumage triétage, à tous de DDO. Attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Et décollage VS26, Galio Fort M9. par mettre à bord son normaux. Raphael, that was very impressive. That a ball of fire uh, bolting uh, into the sky. Bonne stabilisation du lanceur. I, I cannot get tired of it. I bet. Like, really, it's very, always very impressive. Uh, and this is like, you know, passing through the, the clouds. What sort of speed is it going I, at it now? It is night. You cannot, uh, like, you can hardly imagine that it's night right now because it's so bright. It's so bright. The light. So right now, Soyuz is providing the, the main nominal. thrust for the mission to escape, really, the gravitational uh, pull of, uh, of the Earth. And in, in a few seconds, uh, we should see the separation of the four lateral boosters that are surrounding the main core. I mean, I, you can imagine that in two minutes, the Soyuz will have gone from zero to, to about 50 kilometers of altitude. That's actually quite incredible. From zero to two kilometers per second. Stabilisation du lanceur. Tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. Like what would this is probably you now say? faster than like, like a bullet. Faster than a faster bullet than right a now. Bullet. Yeah. You've got the, um, the earpiece. What is the DDO? What did he just say then? It, it said that everything is, is nominal, the trajectory is nominal, so uh, everything's looking good for Soyuz right now. So you can see the light coming from the four boosters. So in 10 seconds, we will have the confirmation, won't we, of the separation of the boosters? And during this... Yeah, oh wow, oh you well, can see it. We can see it, it's wow, incredible. That's really incredible. What a sight, Raphael. Because uh, usually you can see it in daylight, but yeah. At night, it's At night, very it's rare. It's quite yeah. incredible. Yeah. Must Separation des blocs BVGD. So we should be in the some seconds as well. No, being so, so it's confirmed. It, it's separated. You, you saw it. And uh, you can tell that uh, Soyuz is now waiting only, <laughs> I'm saying only, 100 tons. It was 310 tons before. So it lost 70% of its weight. Wow, that's quite incredible. But um, so it's got four boosters. Is this specific to Soyuz? Yeah, we can see now on the uh, the 3D images. It has four boosters. Can you talk to us about that? Well, Specific I mean, the size and the number of the boosters um, that you need for a flight really depends on how much power you want to give to your rocket to uh, place the satellites into space. On Soyuz, you have four boosters. On Ariane 5, we have two, but they are bigger. On Vega, we have one booster. So it really depends on... Uh, on uh, the, the performance that uh, is required for, for the mission. With Ariane 6, we will have two versions, one with two boosters and one with four boosters, okay. depending also on the performance of the launch uh, vehicle. To give you an idea, with Ariane 62, um, you can, uh, with Ariane 64, you can double the mass of the satellites to be put into, for example, geostationary transfer orbit. So if we look up the... Um the images which are coming up now, the 3D images, the wonderful image of the, uh, the launch vehicle. What can we see? You can see the altitude, distance, speed. So right now it's 117 and kilometers of altitude. And sorry to interrupt, and in three seconds we will just, sorry, we will also be having the separation of the fairing. There we go. Altitude du lanceur, conforme à l'attendu. That's just been confirmed, has it not? It is confirmed. Separation des deux demi -coiffes. So now it's confirmed, and it's a very Brilliant. good news because the, the, the mission can continue. You can imagine that it's an important step. Otherwise, we could not release the satellites into space. So it means that we are above the atmosphere, um, Les à bord sont normaux. and that the satellites don't need the protection of the fairing anymore. Uh, it was protecting them from the friction of the air. So if I've understood rightly, we are now waiting for the separation of the second stage. Is that right? Yes. Uh, it's right, and this is a, a peculiar um, separation because 
the third stage is going to ignite two seconds before, and this is actually the ignition of the third stage that will push the second stage and separate it from the rest of the launch vehicle. And it should come any, any second now. now. There we go. So waiting for the confirmation of the DDO. Because I remind that this is a uh, 3D simulations here. Allumage bloqué, extinction blocage et séparation. So it's confirmed. That's so brilliant. The That's mission really can brilliant continue. news. Another important step. So the achieved. second stage, or the main core, has now been separated. The arrière. third stage remains the one that powers the launch. What is the role of each of these stages for the launcher? Well, ha having several stages increases the mass uh, of the satellites to be put into orbit. Stabilisation orbits. suite à séparation. So the principle is rather simple, and we progressively, progressively, sorry, get rid of any mass on the launcher that is useless. It's like uh, if you want an image, you can consider a fuel truck. Let's consider that the truck is driving using the gas contained in its tanks. When the first tank in, uh, is empty, it becomes completely useless, uh, so it becomes uh, dead weight, if you will, and we just remove uh, this dead weight to make the rest of the rocket lighter and to gain power to continue the mission. So at this stage of the mission, Raphael, how far along is our launcher? So you can see that it has traveled 780 kilometers in only six minutes. That's incredible. So it's now at the speed of 4.5 kilometers per second. I remind that all the parameters are on the screen so everybody can read it. So it's three or four times the speed of a bullet right now. So we're getting closer to the naval station. What are the specificities? I can't say that word. The specifics of this station. The well, uh, unlike ground telemetry stations, the naval station is located uh, right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, in this case, this is a ship that is equipped with an antenna that we position on the ocean a couple of days before the launch. So this is a mobile station on water, literally. Yeah, and uh, it raises some log logistic uh, issues because we need to position the ship, the ship in advance. The ship really Acquisition needs... Acquisition of the telemesure by the station naval. Okay, very good news. So the ship needs... I yeah, I, I said that uh, it's a, We've just a, acquired a technological the issue because the ship needs to be stable and well-oriented in order to receive the signal from the launcher with sufficient accuracy. Propulsif du bloc I. Can you confirm, Raphael? He has confirmed the acquisition yeah. of the naval station. That's brilliant The acquisition news. is confirmed. So we've already talked about this station for the previous Vega flight, VB-20. That flight also had a rather unusual trajectory. Can you perhaps also tell us what direction uh, the launch is going and our launch is going in tonight? Well, I mean, this is the targeted orbit that really drives the trajectory of the launcher, and it drives what we call the ground track. It is, in a way, the shadow of the launcher on the Earth's uh, surface. And uh, right now, the inclination of the targeted orbit uh, for Galileo is 57 um, degrees with respect to the equator. And we have the obligations to continuously monitor the position of the launcher up to a certain uh, altitude. And Sometimes, like today, it happened that we cannot follow the launcher from a fixed ground station because the launcher passes over the Atlantic Ocean and it will continue over Normandy and England. This is why we need such a naval station. It's going over my home country. That's brilliant. You're English, right? So yeah, <laughs> you hadn't guessed already. So anyway, so we're going in a northeasterly eastern direction. Is that right then? Yeah, exactly. But you know, you, we use a different... Uh, network of uh, telemetry stations, depending on the trajectory. For example, for um, a mission going towards the east, that's the case for geostationary transfer orbit missions, we use a different network of uh, telemetry stations. And when we uh, target the uh, sun synchronous orbit, we are launching towards the north, and we are using another set of telemetry stations. And the DDO just said that everything is nominal right now. So can you just tell us at 9.23, 9 minutes 23 seconds, he will be announcing what? Well, the, the separation. separation of the third stage, which is another very important step here. It's, it's now, that's right. We can see it on the 3D images. Yes, it's and quite we are incredible. waiting, yes. We are waiting for the confirmation, of course, uh, from the DDO. 
I think my f the, f the most wonderful image I've ever seen of this a type of golden mushroom. Yeah, what this is, is that? This is the fregate upper Extinction stage. Extraction of the et separation. So it's confirmed. The third stage has Brilliant. been separated. And right now, it is the fregate upper stage that is going to continue the mission. It is that upper stage that is going to place uh, the Galileo satellites into their uh, orbit, separated orbit. And from there, the Galileo satellites will place themselves on their operational orbit. So can you just tell what is it exactly in a couple of words before we get the announcement from the DDO about the ignition of the first frigate? Yeah, so um, the ignition of the first frigate is really to place this upper stage, so it's happening right now, we will need the confirmation from the DDO, to place this upper stage on an elliptical uh, trend, uh, intermediate orbit, and it's going to ignite for 12 or 13 minutes, which is quite long because you it requires minutes, some energy incredible. to place um, the upper stage on this orbit. So we're still waiting for confirmation. Exactly. And then we will have a long ballistic phase of about 3 hours and 20 minutes. Confirmation du premier allumage de l'étage frégate. 